Sorry, I just have to communicate with the players to let them know because they're having a little bit of a chat in the middle and Team Netherlands were asking if they needed to drop out. But uh, no, I they just need to let them know that they will play against Helsinki Red and Netherlands. So as we said, it's unfortunate, but who are they had to drop out of the tournament because of some uh, real life issues, something to do with uh, one of the players' car, car or something. Uh, I don't have any further details, but... You know, they they showed us that they have some talent and uh, they qualified for this one. So, fingers crossed they'll be able to make it back for the next one and uh, be able to do even better. So, I think the players to watch. So, on Helsinki Red, who do you who do you think you um, uh, want to watch from the start? Who oh, do you think definitely. Is, who, if, if, if Helsinki Red are going to pop off, who is the player to follow? I'm definitely going to want to watch Kreimer for obvious reasons and also for the others because he's shown up in the first match that we had today. Exceed has delivered quite a good soldier, quite a solid one. Yeah. And the guy that I'm going to look out for him flopping maybe, not necessarily just going wild, but flopping, is Rue Ape because he made that one mistake on Numbani that's killed the game for them. So right now just... Don't chase anybody. Don't <laughs> don't go tunnel visioning, and everything is going to be fine. Yeah, I'm uh, be curious to see whether Crusade decides to pull out that reaper. I was really impressed by it. It's funny actually because as a team on Netherlands, I've been very impressed by um, people's individual performance. You know, the first uh, match against Helsinki Red, Jonah had a strong performance on Winston. Uh, Too Easy has shown us a very strong performances. Uh, at times on Tracer and Soldier 76. Visility has been popping off on his Genji. Dante Sombra impressed me. Crusades Reaper and Diva. So this is a, it's a very funny thing in that you can see the individual talent of all of these players. Um, and it's just a, it's just slight issues with um, their coordination that a, a, t a team that is as good as Vivi's is able to kind of take advantage of. And that's why they, they won. But here we're down to the final three maps. So we have Namambi, uh, Voskaya, and uh, Nepal. So it'll be interesting to see who Helsinki bans now. Um, I think it'll be really fun to see Nepal as the first match. We have a Volskaya over the Rado or Route 66. What the hell is going on here? I and is it going to be the first Nepal map too? Is out. Nepal is out, so it's either going to be a, a oh. Namani. Yeah. So if it goes 2-0, they're not going to play Volskaya. But no. I just I don't think it's going to be Volskaya. <sighs> What? I'm looking forward to seeing Nepal. I'm I, that's you know we haven't had it yet so far today, and it's a map that I, I think uh, there's some interesting strats on it, so it'll be good to see. And it's definitely one that um, I think would favor some of the like Netherlands. I would say I think it favors the Netherlands and the the ability of too easy and visibility to be able to uh, flank the other team. So it'll be good to see how things go. Well, so the one, one of, if not the most hated map of the pro players is actually in the pool. Huh. I, I really don't believe it. And Dorado, one of the most popular ones over the major amount of time in Overwatch's life, is banned instead of it. It's crazy how it's gone, and I want to see a full best of three. I want them to play on Volskaya Industries, really. I want to see what kind of ideas they're going to go for, because I have to admit I've not seen a Volskaya Industries yet. Yeah, that would be very interesting once. to see. So once again, I'm going to uh, rely on chat a little bit, but apparently uh, Trispia has told me that um, the Dutch team, so Netherlands, they uh, call, do their call-outs and so on in English. So that's quite interesting because I would have thought they, they would have stuck to their native language, but that probably ties into the fact that they are a part-time team and that the players play professionally for other more permanent teams. Um, so they communicate in English on the other team, so it makes sense that they kind of oh, yeah. carry this over. But I, I definitely would have thought they would have swore back to their native language. Maybe they don't want to get rusty, or maybe another big thing is it is so in Counter Strike. I believe it is so in Overwatch. Yeah. Callouts of the places is just so completely different in different languages. Yeah. So yeah, maybe they they just wouldn't know what they're talking about in Dutch even. 
But mm. yeah, that also is the thing. Like, and everybody in Netherlands has good English, basically. So yes, it's not a problem. Absolutely. So that this is, I mean, that it seems Netherlands is one of the best places for English. Sometimes better than the English themselves. So we have the two teams up right now. So uh, nothing surprising, I guess, pretty wise on the Anna. That's interesting. Um, oh, I just lost. Yeah, I can see that you left the game. So. Yep, I've just been uh, booted out. I think uh, the Doomfist patch is just about to start it up. Okay, hopefully... Uh... The game's not going to be completely shattered for now. Everything's fine other than you dropping out. But yep. well, let's see, Mortz and Dante from behind. It seemed like Rue wanted to jump right on top of them, but he somehow got knocked away very far by the Lucio and then killed off by Too Easy. It was too easy for Too Easy to actually aim at him midair right there with that soldier of his. Crusade is going to get rid of Humera's mecha and that Humera jumps in without the mecha. Of course, I realize that he wants to die as quickly as possible right there, but that looked extremely reckless. And Krimer from behind with that Genji of his. He's tracked down by Yona, and it seems like Netherlands are doing perfectly fine on this Numbani again. And indeed, they just played a Numbani a while ago. They will know how to play on it, and they will be warmed up on it. So, finally, too easy kicking off with a soldier, not stubbornly trying to play the Tracer when it's not needed to. They're all hitting their good plays, the good decisions. Yona is just ch chasing everybody down with that Winston perfectly. Look at that and nice little setup for Crusade and um, Jonah just at the top there, predicting where. Uh, I can't tell who was on the other team, but the other Diva coming out and just doing it. And yeah, as you said, you know, too easy is come starting up on his uh, soldier and just was able to put out a lot of damage. This is the player that you wanted to watch and here's the opportunity but look at that three four people down on Helsinki Red now another four again and only one person left lost on Team Netherlands so that was one hell of a push and really nice kind of coordination there be interesting to see how things go yeah so crime has got the dragon blade fast Bob Ross has this uh, sound barrier so we could be seeing some kind of an opportunity for Helsinki Reds right now. There comes self destruct though, and they all be scattered completely. There comes the Crimo's Dragon Blade, but he's not really able to catch up to anybody just yet. Too easy, he's gonna get struck down. But then on the other hand, Facility is trying to counter it completely. Mort is getting the kills, Dante is getting the kills, the Genjis are in the middle of the fray with their ultimates unsheathed. And they both cannot do too This much. is what I was saying. Just look at Visility. His Genji is just, it's incredible. He's really uh, unlocking the map. And when he's able to get going and use his ultimate to advantage, his Dragon Blade is really uh, just very dominant. But they've not struggled at all to get these first two points, which is a bit concerning for Helsinki Reds. I would have thought they would have had a bit more of a defense prepared. The Shadow of Okay, so Crusade's trying to get up his mech as quickly as possible, and he's got it. 62% of ultimate already to 2, so might soon have a self-destruct. There comes a sentence, an offensive one, actually. Krimer is going to try to push through, but, well, he's on the diva this time around. He's already abandoned the idea of playing it. Uh, the, the Genji Wimera actually is uh, seeming to be the main Tracer player on the team, which is interesting. I'll touch on that later, though. But once again getting shattered completely, Crimer loses the Mecha, and that way Payload will be pushed further. Um, Some and great no movement there from Too Easy, and like the damage against ones that he's outputting. Um, but it's it's great. One of the things I love watching at high elo players is just the way uh, they move around the map and their creativity to kind of get out of that danger, and as well whilst keeping themselves in a position to output that DPS. So here we are. It's pushing in the final push. Um, Netherlands have three ultimates up. Okay, Visility just seems to have used his Dragon Blade, and yep, one kill. There we go. Uh, three down. Yep, three down for Helsinki Reds, and it seems like this will be it. I, I find it surprising if they're able to do that. Yeah, it's just oh. a constant one, one at a time. They're just picking people off, and <laughs> Helsinki Reds won't be able to, um, you know, coordinate a, a proper defense to prevent Netherlands from taking four minutes. Time blank. 
go. It's quite big, and as I mentioned before the game started, Team Netherlands might just have needed the warm-up against Helsinki Reds, and that might be enough to crush them. But then we've also seen Helsinki Reds with a very successful attack on Numbani at first, and we never expected Team Netherlands to actually turn around, but they did. So maybe Helsinki Reds will return the favor. And yeah, I wanted to talk about Kreimer and Umero right there. Uh, that Umera, whenever they need a Tracer, he switches over to Tracer and Krima takes over the Diva, which is real interesting because you usually have a Tracer and Genji player on your team and um, usually the Tracer also switches over to the Soldier, but that's not the case in their lineup. And uh, there are two types of heroes in Overwatch, right? You've got hit scans which shoot exactly where you aim, and you've got uh, projectiles, which is like Genji, who has to throw shurikens, and there are the delays before they hit. And yeah, that's why it works combined, kind of. But there are some players that are very good at hit scans, like Soldier and McCree, but don't have good enough movement to take care of a Tracer. But yeah, right well, that's here... That's the way of balancing, it's... isn't it? That's how GameStar choose to balance. And it was uh, So I used to play a lot of Halo, and that was a big debate from Halo 2, which went from hit scan to um, lead shots in Halo 3. And it's a different type of skill because you've got to obviously um, have the ability to predict where the other uh, person is moving, the, the speed of your projectiles and the speed of their movement. And it Blizzard have been quite clever in how they've split hit scan and lead shots across the characters because it gives them an additional way of nerfing or balancing um, champions uh, as opposed to just hitting the numbers. So it looks like the Doom Fist patch is out now, I would I expect. so. I don't know, we'll have to find out whether the teams want to use them next. It'd be very interesting to see, though. Well, there we go. Winston diving very deep. That's Rue for you. And once again, he goes chasing people. Once again, it's a complete failure. I just don't like when he does that. But maybe finally it will work out and completely uh, demolish. Dominate. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just, uh, you know, we're looking at Hilton Key Reds and just their coordination and their team push just isn't there. You look at that. So Exceed was in a good position, but then once he saw that Team Netherlands was ready for him and kind of uh, predicted where he would go, he should have pulled back. He stayed too long and Netherlands were able to take advantage of it and just punish Hilton Key Reds for it. So too easy this time on the Tracer, while usually right here on Numbani we could see yesterday and today that the Soldier on defense was much more favored by the players. And too easy decides to go the opposite way, but this time it's working around actually. Dante is going to get the kill on Crime right here. Ruet actually delivered a lot of that AoE damage with the Winston and he's able to get out. And he's got the Harmony Orb, so he will be healing up real quickly. Humero also to soak up with the Defense Matrix and they're baited straight into the Winston again. But he brings the, uh, the Pulse Bomb straight into his team. If not the Transcendence right here, they might have taken some more casualties overall. Yeah, I mean, that was just a beautiful play from Too Easy right there. And just the, the way they're able to uh, eliminate multiple players from Helsinki Reds constantly. Um, you know, the team shot of Team Netherlands has just been very impressive in their focus and communication, so it'll be great to see. And it's already I actually this. wonder, we only have two minutes left, and, it'll be, yep. and I wonder if Helsinki Reds are going to be able to coordinate things to actually take this first point, or whether this is going to be it. It's yeah, hard to but... imagine though, with four ultimates on Netherlands, and they haven't exactly been struggling against Helsinki so far. First point is actually one thing, but they're already looking not so healthy with that time back if they get to face off against uh, what Netherlands have done. Oh, there we go, Ruwave going wild, but he's got the Discord on him, and even the Primal Rage might not be enough to help him, especially when he's used, losing his teammates, manages to jump away, but will he jump away to safety to life? Yes! Luckily Look at enough for itself. just chasing hard, but still like no danger at all. You know, you would have thought that these the three of them would have been completely overextended there, but oh, yeah. not at all. The whole team pushed up, they coordinated, supported each other, and even the supports behind them moved forward in such a way to keep themselves safe, but in position that they're able to uh, save their teammates that had pushed forward to kind of secure the kills. Okay, not much done by Romero's self-destruct right there, other than zoning the enemies out. And there comes the tactical visor from above. Yona knew that Primo was coming from there, excuse me, Exceed was coming from there. 
but he was not able to necessarily stop him. And they still did not really do too much to the tactical visor. Crimer with a kill on Crusade. Too easy, he's gonna reply the favor. And uh, BBR is already gone. The transcendence once again right on point, and now they will be trying to take that point. But too easy, he's still there to say no. Facility. Goes off with the Dragon Blade, has a Discord Orb up towards the Soldier, he goes down to one god, that's a triple kill combined, he picked off with a kill on Rue, not to mention, and then finishes off with Lumera, no time, they had almost taken the point, but now, okay, the Genji will probably make it in time, no, oh, Mort with the Lucio, keeps him away, okay, never mind, the Swift Strike makes it through, I thought that there would even not even be an overtime. Which was Zillity had just been so dominant this this whole day so far. You know, I've, I've actually really called him the MVP of Team Netherlands at the moment. Um, just his performance. Look at that. It's just kill after kill after kill. There's another one. He's just shutting down Helsinki Reds, and there we go. That's it. 1 0. Oh. So Krima jumping in and triggering the overtime was one thing, but with him going in so recklessly, it actually meant that his team once again is going to be scattered. So. Uh, yeah, I thought there wouldn't even be an overtime, but the fact that there was one didn't change anything really, so I got exci overexcited for nothing. Nah, maybe just a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the invisibility. Yeah. Uh, oh, nearly actually. Yeah, this was where he managed to get three kills. And I actually think I, if it goes long enough, he actually gets a four. Yeah, there we go. It's the fourth kill. What a great performance. 17 objective kills, 30 eliminations in total from Vizility there. Should be really proud of his performance so far. So here we go. So we're going into uh, the next match. It was 1-0. Um, as far as I'm aware, we, I think Doomfist is uh, available. I don't know if the, yeah. it's been updated for all of them, but it'll be very exciting no, to see. No. The players just mentioned that they should not restart the game because the patch went live, so they will not be quitting yeah. it. And since I cannot see you in the lobby, I am aware of that because I already casted okay. a, a tournament when the patch went yeah. live, and it means you will not be able to join the lobby. Ah, okay. Work for you. Fair enough. Well, too bad. I will just have to watch the stream and pay attention to the chat. I am paying attention to the chat, guys, by the way. <laughs> He's the guardian. Watch out. Yeah, there we go. So, Exorath. As you were say, asking how the rest of the tourney will be played, well, what's going to happen is um, it shouldn't actually take too long for the patch to update. Fingers crossed that so we might just have like a 10-minute break and then we'll go straight back into it. So mm. here we are. So this is going to be our first Nepal. Yep, first Nepal of the day. And yesterday was quite a popular map. But yeah, guess what? Nobody's going to pick Volskaya. <laughs> guess why? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm not even sure it's going to get to Volskaya. Oh uh, yeah, that's that's very much true. Especially, I mean, you've got great Genji on the hands of facility. You've got a great tracer for too easy if it's needed. If anybody is as crazy to go for a Farah Mercy on Nepal, then they can go for a Soldier. Sure, and yeah, that's all you need on a. On the King of the Hill map, you need the mobile DPS, you need the Winston to work quite fine, and of course, additionally, the D.Va. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how, how it goes. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Both teams are sticking oh, wow. to... Oh, Crusade is taking his D.Va, so there won't be a Reaper from him at the moment. Um, both teams are pretty standard set up. Wait a second, yeah. Wumera is playing the Tracer, that's because they don't have a dedicated Tracer player, so they don't have a D.Va. And that's quite tricky. Uh, the, it might work out, but it might not be that they are completely useless on a King of the Hill map. Oh, look at this, just opening up in visibility already, facilitating what, three, four kills there, four down on King of the Oh, wow. Actually, Helsinki Reds are taking quite a good advantage that they took out about four, four uh, players from Team Netherlands. So. It's the other way around. The names are swapped and it's Team Netherlands yep. smashing Helsinki. Oh, Resident it is. Party. Okay. That's what I thought, but I was suddenly a bit uh, confused there. Yeah, but that's the thing. As I mentioned, I, you don't have a diva. You don't have a dedicated Tracer player on a King of the Hill where both these heroes are so important. This is crazy. This is madness. Yeah, it's I, definitely tricky, but... Uh... 
Yeah, I'm a bit surprised by that. I, I don't really know, but we'll just have to see how they, they react. I would have thought they would have gone for the Diva over the Tracer, but perhaps um, he plays it a lot more in solo queue and feels more comfortable. Oh, oh Primer, kind of at least. Double kill. He himself is at a comfortable the hero for himself, gets a triple kill with the Dragon Blade, but if he's the only one performing on the team, it also isn't going to be too uh, lucky for them overall, and Xeed just tries to group up with it again. But yeah, they need some changes. I don't know, like, Tracer Genji is the most standard one, and maybe you can replace the Tracer with a Soldier. But Xeed... If all he can do is play a soldier and he cannot play a diva, then they're in a big pinch. Really. Yeah, well, I'm surprised that he can play soldier, but he can't play um, tracer. But maybe it's the other way around, and that the other player can't play um, Rumera can't play diva, so he has to play the tracer. Um, it's definitely I don't know. We'll have to just wait and see. But so far, Netherlands are just controlling the uh, tempo of the match. Alright, so Mera just uh, has to jump out of the map. Do you have to group up yet again? Because this is the last push, probably, if they even make it on time. Will it be cut off? Uh, BRR could have just wrapped around. Okay, that's a transcendence into the point to secure the overtime. Interesting idea I see from Freewise out there. But overall, once again, it turns into Mayhem, and they're not going to have a defensive ultimate in such a key situation. That also does not help too much. Grimer from behind, once again, he does not have the ultimate though, so he's easily shot down. And that's 1-0 in favor of Team Netherlands. And I'm not too sure if there will be any pieces left of Helsinki Reds to even collect after this map if it continues like this. And Yeah, uh, coming... I mean, this is just... Uh... This is Umara so is actually the main D.Va player on their team, so it's not the other way around for sure. It's just that uh. team has to play the same team. Right. Why should I pay attention to you, Get, get Vegas? <laughs> Look at these guys calling me out in chat now that they know I'm paying attention to them. <laughs> attention seeking, that's what they are. Uh, no, it's it's definitely interesting. I, I'm not entirely sure what Helsinki Reds are doing, but it just shows that the individual talent on Team Netherlands, despite them not being a full time team, is so high that they're able to kind of. Um, dominate this other team so oh, yeah, here, here sure. we have a real opportunity and i'm actually very excited to see what uh too easy and facility are able to do on this map because i just think it's going to mm -hmm. Well, Vazility is going to get the first kill on Xeed right off the bat. Umera is going to get obliterated by too easy and right off the bat in yes the three dps come where two DPS go down right on the start, you know something goes wrong. Yona is going to get a double for himself with a Winston right in the face. Of course, since the DPS have gone down, there's nobody who can take down a Winston, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, but look at that. Just without any real trouble, it seems like they're just able to, to pick off those outliers of Helsinki Red. And um, Helsinki just isn't prepared. It has no answer for Team Netherlands' uh, performance. And I just... Leaping out again to a dominant lead. Okay, so... Uh, will they even be able to approach... It's actually interesting that they push uh, the Netherlands back to their own entry room, which is interesting because usually when you're dominating on Sanctum right here, you close the enemies out nearly at the respawn. And it's a thing that the Netherlands did not decide to do. Romero is not going to hit with that Pulse Bomb. Rue though, getting a kill on Dante, which is quite uh, handy out here. But he's surrounded by three to four people, and he's getting no healing for now. But BBR joins in, and he'll be able to finally provide a little bit of an advantage for his team. Romero with a kill on Crusade, too, but when Yonari joins, and he has the Primal Rage. It turns around again. Romero will be able to recall, and that way they just isolate the Winston and kill him off. And that's the point taken over. Finally, they're getting the first percentage on the pal. About time. Oh, that's exactly what you do on Nepal when you're dominating the points. If you wanted to know, I think he have a good idea here. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about this match. It's just kind of a bit of a shutout, but it just shows us that Netherlands are a step above every other team. Apart from the team. So we excite. I have no doubt we'll get an exciting kind of final match there from them.
fine. Just look at this stuff. Hang on, like it goes off, even kill again. Pretty wise actually racking up a lot of takedowns this fight. And once again, it is going to be Helsinki Reds prevailing in here. Interesting, interesting. They know once again how to close it up. But usually, when uh, the attacking teams are closing it off, or the last time I was casting Warth on the PAL, for instance, the Netherlands team, they had a Reaper. But right now, the Reaper is not as common uh, lineup, so. Happening. Yeah, this is uh, just a bit concerning in the way I think the Helsinki Reds are, are, are getting beaten so convincingly. They really need to uh, take a good think about how, what they're planning on doing and how they can fix the issues that they have at the moment. But here we go, look, with a bit of con contest on the middle, but. And uh, nope, there we go, back on the point. Too easy to look to the argument that kills him. The issue of just not having a deep right here, the triple. Yes, comp, it might have some fundamentals out there, it might work out somehow. When you dominate, you can close your enemies off because they feel overwhelmed. But normally, without a diva, you cannot block any of their soldiers' bullets, you cannot block any of uh, Vizility's ideas right there with his Genji. It's just so much harder, and especially when somebody from your team has a Discord or cannot soak anything, it just dies. Absolutely. So there we go. Here we have the ultimate from Soldier 76 just pumping out the damage. We have two down on Team Netherlands at the moment, but two down on Helsinki Reds as well. So just controlling the tempo, and this is the thing, is whilst they're taking the kills out, and, or maybe matching kills, where they're holding it and creating the pressure and uh, keeping the other team at bay is very important to recognize when you're, you're spectating. Too easy with a little mistake right there. He ran out of the tactical visor and he jumped out of the room straight into a Winston. That's a lot of unlucky out there. But they group up again and this is the last fight of this Sanctum in here. Could be 1-1 one, one just as well. Facility though. So let's go of this Dragon Blade that will get the kill pretty wise but they're not the point. They didn't even trigger the OT. What? That's a crucial mistake, and that's one that I wasn't expecting from Team Netherlands, but... Um, yeah. yeah. That's surprising. I didn't expect that at all, but maybe they wanted a little bit more practice, wanted to refine their technique, but like good comeback from Helsinki Red, so they should be feeling good. Um, the performance that was solid, and you know they're able to kind of take, pull it back and take that win. So now it's a matter of coming down to this match. I still... See Netherlands is winning it, um, but I wonder if it. Wonder if we're going to see a reverse sweep now. Hmm. Yeah, that could be pretty interesting. And I still have to say that I would just love to see that Volskaya for the sake of I don't know. Just maybe we'll see a completely funny game where both of the teams will not have an idea of what to do there. Really, that would be a little bit of a. Of a lesson to them not to pick up this guy again, or maybe I just don't know. Maybe all of a sudden we have two teams that both know how to play for Sky and like it, but I just don't see people liking Temple of the Moves of the Sky. No, absolutely. It, I definitely don't think so, but uh, we'll see. But here we are off to an explosive start, four people dead already, and they are capping the point. This is quite tough once again. The point belongs to Netherlands right off the bat. And right here, it's not so close quarters as it was in Sanctum, so it's going to be tough to get in once again with no Diva. But that Diva actually shows up. It's Primer picking her up, so it kind of seems to realize that it's a necessity in here. And too easy, he's going to take down Ruwave. So without Winston now, it's going to be a little bit tough of facility though. Right in the corner, assaulted by four people at the same time with Discord on him, but he only dies to Romero, who finally joins the deep fight right as the, as the end of the hit. And or two, he's going to be jumping around the point and will not be able to survive too long. And yeah, here we are. Points taken over finally by Helsinki, but is it for long? My ultimate is ready.
Okay, so we're just figuring out, so after this we'll be having a small break just so everything patches up, but focusing back on here, so uh, given that we both expect the Netherlands to win, what do you think they need to do to be able to beat the Oh, don't say, but let's see if that Dragon Blade is going to be able to turn everything around. And I was talking about how XC can only play Soldier, but he turns down on, on a Genji. Primer goes for a Diva. Seems like they're not stubborn. And, and this could be their opportunity, though Primer has to be careful. Behind a lot of big Diva will survive that Diva appears. Oh, what? The point was not taken over, just taking a look at how built it is. He's still taking over. Reds though for a moment longer. And we'll we might not actually be seeing a reverse here. So like Helsinki Reds have managed to, to really uh, capitalize on the opportunities that they're taking. And... No way. Okay, now now uh, Team Netherlands have managed to cap it once again. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to shut things out. There we go. Visibility creating the plays. Alt after alt after alt on this point, but nobody would be getting up a hand just yet. Netherlands finally clear them out. It's going to be a little bit better. So 75% for them. It's going to take most likely two more fights in order to win it. Unless Helsinki Reds take too much time right here. Yep. Just have to see. So now the overshot. So now nice little jump forwards there. Kind of clear up the, the higher areas. 85% on te for Team Netherlands, so it'll be interesting to see what the Helsinki's are able to coordinate and push in. Now they're trying to capture it. If Helsinki don't win this team fight, this is the last one. Yona wins the fight against Rue, but Rue uh, post bottom actually killed Morse right there, so no Lucio, and no Lucio is bad news, but right after Yona all alone, he's just a one man army with a huge ace. And uh, Exceed also is not going to run away with that Genji appears, but he manages to get the Dragon Blade going, and he's still being healed up. Exceed actually kills on Yoda, but is it not too late? Did not give too much time for the rest of the enemy team to regroup. The Netherlands are doing as much as they can, but actually it's the time the other way around for Helsinki Reds to respawn and come back right here on top of the point, and it's taken over by the rest. To test it. There we go. They have captured the points, and I wonder if they're going to be able to turn this around. Three kills for Team Netherlands. Look at Visility, he's just leading the charge here with two easy as his backup, and they're just eliminating everyone on Helsinki Reds. Uh, it looks like they're about to capture it. Yep, they are, and with the overtime, I think this is done. Oh man. 2 1 now, right here, but still a great effort from Helsinki Reds to still try and fight for it. Again, it's been an overtime, such a long time out there, and it seemed like they were losing completely with Yona taking down four people. Like, they were able to survive so long. It's huge. Yeah, no, it, massively, and I think uh, they should definitely feel good about themselves because we were saying that they needed to, to come up with a new answer, a new approach, and they've shown that they can. So this is still anyone's match. They could definitely reverse, uh, get the next two matches and uh, take us to game three. We'll have to okay. just wait and see. Shout out to our observer, Marvin, who's doing a great job, I think. Oh yeah, Marvin and also Willy. We are having two observers switching between each other. Look at this great panning. Excellent. And here we go. So the match is starting up. The two teams are already being aggressive on the left-hand side of the map, doing a bit damage. Trace against Tracer, too easy being very aggressive, right up in front. You can see them, that sort of 76, as we're saying, He's trying to push the damage. So both teams are trying to get an object, get a couple of picks that allow them to jump on the objective and control it, which is over in a couple of seconds. Freewise and Xseed actually racking up the first kills. It seems like they will also be able to take the point first. Helsinki Reds, they've done very well in Sanctum last time. And actually, due to some weird decisions, weird mistakes, I think, on the side of Team Netherlands. So will the exact same thing happen again? We'll find out. Once again, the three DPS out there. Once again, no diva. Yeah, it's interesting because when watching the uh, Helsinki Reds, they definitely seem to be playing a bit of a chaotic style, but it's working very well for them. But you know, them, they're, they're, they're making it work for them. They're now keeping uh, the point away from Team Netherlands. And a lot of damage. Look at this. Too easy. Just sitting back, pumping out all that damage, and just slowly taking out a couple of people. That should be another two kills. Oh, have they gotten away? 
Looks like they got it ready, but there we go. Third kill in the match. Three down on Helsinki, right? So right now, Netherlands should be taking over the points. Jonah, just saying, uh, once again, Netherlands taking it back, and they are now going for the aggressive uh, hold on the enemy team. Will they be able to hold them back? That's the different question. The three DPS should be easy to crush them if somebody just uh, peeks out a little bit too early. You could be instantly killed. Absolutely, so Rap is leading the charge, trying to jump in, but it's the rest of the team right behind him has been hard to see, but the ability, oh, he's just being caught by a giant raging monkey. And here we go, too easy, being chased down, like it's great aggression coming from Helsinki Reds, and uh, completely blew open the, the defensive team Netherlands Ooh. right there. That's clutch, the enemy, stop focusing on him, a biotic kill, then on top of that, a tactical visor, three kills, earlier on he got one more. And this team fight just belongs to him completely. And he then rushes out all alone to try and stop them from coming back. Amazing. That was a great reaction from 2 and Supervisor. So now we need to see, can they repeat their, their damage that they did before? I just managed to peek out there and had Crusades Diva, but I wonder if he's pushing forward. Team Netherlands just have such a good setup, especially with too easy invisibility, the way that they're playing. It's just it's hard to see Helsinki uh, turning this around, but they managed to previously. And there we go. Potentially a very good visor from Exceed, but no, he's not getting any opportunity pass to pull back. Yeah, that's the thing. What Helsinki Reds couldn't do against the visor that uh, was thrown out by too easy is what the Netherlands have done. Just throw a diva right into it, even without the defense matrix. It's just a mecha that you lose right there. It soaks up all the damage. Everybody else is alive. And this You're not is losing it. four people. You're losing half a person, really. And this is Team Netherlands taking the map and match home. Only one point giving up. And I think that it was by some extreme confusion right there. And facility once again with the play of the match. This guy, come on, just how much he developed over the course of the three matches. Like today. Resility has just been a monster. I'm not even sure. Like, I'm, I'd am i be surprised if we had a player that actually has him involved in. Um, if, if him and Too Easy are going to continue this type of performance into the finals, I think it'll be really exciting to see how things turn out. Um, so, Team Netherlands beating Helsinki Reds quite convincingly. Maybe not as convincingly as the first one, but it was still very interesting. Um, Netherlands are looking very good and they had a fed despite the two zero two vv's adventures i think netherlands performed quite well and uh it could have gone the other way or they could have taken one match but in particular they're looking even better now so i, I could see something happening on um but we're going to be taking about a 10 minute break to make sure that everyone can update to the doomfist patch so we have uh and the team should be able to pick doomfist in the finals which will be quite exciting to see whether they have it or not um, I still think Vivi's Adventure are the favorites, their performance and their aggressiveness and particularly the way wow. that they were playing together, their chemistry, uh, just seems to be slightly higher than, um, Netherlands, but I still think it could really go either way because Netherlands are showing that they are playing better than ever. Hmm. Is it just me? Oh, frozen. Never gonna give